Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, no, no update this week. So, uh, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you all next week. Okay, so there are updates. So, let's just kick into an update. Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. Um, as I said in the intro, there's not a lot of up updates, but uh, funny st story. So, first of all, thank you to everybody who supports my work on Inkscape. Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, none of this would be possible without your help. Um, if you'd like to join in all of the people that help me basically spend my uh, professional time working on Inkscape, please do consider subscribing to my Patreon. And I also have a Libre Pay. Okay, so this week I wanted to focus on the Shape Builder tool. I was looking around at some of the uh, both people who've been trying the alpha and who've been producing things like tutorials and vid videos, and also some of the example files that people have been producing. And I wasn't very happy with the results. Uh, there's a lot of errors, there's a lot of uh, duplicate shapes, bad shape uh, fracturing. Um, intersections of lines that just basically fail and produce a completely blank can canvas. I wasn't happy. But part of this is that the Shape Builder tool is relatively hidden from developers. Like, we don't really have a good way of testing what uh, different kinds of patterns will look like and how to test them all. Um, so what I did was I... Uh, got a set of, of, of Shape Builder grids from Chris Hildebrand, who is the artist who produced the uh, Inkscape 1.2 1, 1 uh, About screen. He's a very good art artist and a very good tutorial ma maker. If you see his videos here on YouTube, please do ch check him out. Um, so he, he had a, basically a set of uh, grids. And um, what I wanted to do was, um, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to provide them for users to be able to use as sort of like starting tem templates and also as a way for developers to basically try a whole bunch of different things that users are likely to do so that they can get a handle on some of the issues. And by ha developers, I mean me, but also other developers who may want to edit the Shape, shape Builder tool. So the, f the first part of my week was essentially creating a library from Chris Hil Hil Hildebrand's work, uh, reformatting them into a way, uh, into essentially templates, which are then available on both the welcome screen and in the new from template the dialogue. I created an I icon for each one of them and allowed you to basically select which of these you want to use. So from this grid selection, you basically can select all of the, ob the objects, control A, what have you, uh, go to the Shape Builder tool and just start playing with the you know, predefined grids. Um, I wanted to make sure that they had good, good icon names, uh, icon names, I mean, good icons and good names. And wanted to make sure that sort of like it was relatively pretty and attractive. Um, Part of the issue that I received in feedback from others is that they wouldn't want to see this feature added um, if the Shape Builder tool itself uh, wasn't up to scratch. And so m mostly this exercise proved that the Shape Builder tool itself was just not good enough. Uh, it has lots of holes, shall we say, sometimes literally. And so what I did was I started talking to other developers about the particular issue. And then I started digging into how to solve for some of the uh, mathematical problems. Those who follow me on Mastodon will have noted that I spent an entire day basically wandering around like Socrates trying, trying to work, work out uh, how to solve particular mathematical problems. Now, um, I don't know if you know this about me, but I am not a graduate of computer science. Uh, my mathematics stopped in high school. And so I am what's known as a brute. I will program as an engineer with a spanner. I am not very good at finesse, especially when it comes to mathematics. So uh, this didn't work out particularly well. Um, 
and I think it, it's telling that PBS, when we were having a chat in the in the in the Rocket Chat, very kindly was like, you know, I've got this in hand. Let let me let me solve the geometry problems, and um, I could focus on basically these these templates and doing testing and just making sure that the Shape Builder tool worked properly. Um, PBS has produced a merge request which fixes not only all of the problems but uh, massively speeds up the generation of the, the fractures. So PBS's work was a able to essentially fix all of the issues with the Shape Build Builder tool. He not only fixed all of the like the overlaps, the in intersecting lines, all of those particular issues, but he also made it a lot, lot faster. Um, I believe this is a merge request which I would never have been able to do myself. Um, so I basically uh, am thankful to PBS for saving my ass and saving the Shape Builder tool, I think, because its introduction in 1.3 would have been a lot less uh, useful and a lot, lot more prob problematic if people saw the state it was in. I mean, it was okay, but uh, bad. Uh, whereas now, I believe it would be useful and not quite as frustrating, uh, which is exactly what we want. So, uh, big thanks to PBS. So, another issue that I actually managed to work on this week was a, um, a duplicate problem. So, I got a pa Patreon a uh, week before last that said to me, when exporting to PDF, the glyphs with large um, uh, stroke widths would basically overlap each other uh, in a way that was incorrect. And so I fixed the problem, if you remember, and then they came back to me and said, no, you didn't, it's not fixed. And I was just scratching my head going like, I keep testing it, it, it works. And it turns out that uh, the problem existed in multiple places and they were doing a text to path, essentially that they were saying, don't, don't save it as glyphs, as text glyphs, save it as a path. And the path conversion itself was broken in the pretty much the same way. Um, so I had to go in and change the uh, object to path. This does have the uh, side benefit of fixing about three other pro problems with the object to path when it concerns text. I needed to make sure that it preserved things like the style. So if you had one piece of bold or one piece of italic or one piece of uh, red text, etc., et that it was able to uh, retain that style information and make sure that the um, you know the way in which it grouped them together optionally grouped them together was was consistent uh, this fixed the pro problem in pdf export uh, but i also had to create essentially an entire matrix of testing because um, i know for a fact that this code is used in multiple places for doing all sorts of things the eraser tool the paint bucket tool like good goodness knows what else so i had to do a full trace of the code and test each of the fun functionalities to make sure that it hadn't broken anything and to understand that the code that I've changed and the way that I've cha changed it is appropriate. Um, I'm fully con con confident that this change actually fixes the issue and also breaks nothing else, at least nothing obvious. Um, but that's basically all I've got up to this week. And um, yeah, it's not, it's not a lot. I know I'm hoping to be able to do a lot more functionality but I think you're you you'll be happy with the shape builder if that is your if that's the thing you're looking for, forward to in in 1.3 and um yeah I will see you all next week <laughs>